Today I want to talk about some collapses. I want to discuss some things related to collapses and characteristics of a wing and how it flies in a collapse and, and improper responses and proper responses and kind of how to practice stimulating or excuse me, simulating, not stimulating collapses. Mike, I don't want you stimulating collapses, okay? Oh, I'm gonna stimulate collapses. Collapse stimulation I class. Like it. I sort of like that. Okay, so to practice collapses on the ground, what you want to do is you want to pull down on your A uh, cascade, which is gonna be the blue on the ozones because they decided to change it from red. And we want to talk about a few things within the collapse. The first thing I want to talk about is a lot of people like to overdo. So I want you to go hands up, Mike. I actually want you to let this wing kind of collapse. Good. I want you to see how the wing kind of changes. It doesn't want to stay above your head. It wants to move. It actually wants to go the direction that collapsed. So when you're in the sky, if you take a collapse, the, the flying side is going to want to chase the non-flying side down. And you can kind of see that if we just lightly well, there you go. Yeah, see, the flying side wants to chase the non-flying side down. It's a very natural tendency of the glider. The flying side wants to follow the giant drag of the other side, as well as it wants to gain airspeed to help refill the other side. And so if this side collapses, this side wants to follow to get speed. Now, a really bad habit of people is to hammer a really hard brake to the collapsed side. What you don't want to do is hammer really hard brake to the collapse side because your wing is in a really compromised state. It's really close to stall point. So stalling a wing is a lot easier in a collapse. If you, if you just hammer really hard brake, you're going to spin it just like Mike did and it's really going to shoot off making the situation worse. It's better to do nothing than it is to overdo in this situation. So what do you do? Well, if you have a 50% collapse or a wing that's going to collapse, you fly the open side. You don't want to overdo. You don't want to overreact. You just want to fly the open side. So if your right side collapses, you just want to apply a little bit of left brake to keep that wing flying nice and straight. And then if it stays collapsed, you do gentle pumps to reopen the wing. And right, so if this sticks, you just kind of do some gentle pumps to reopen it, which that didn't do. The big thing with collapse is you want to keep that wing flying in a straight line. So if your right side collapses, what you want to do is make sure that le left side is flying in a straight line or as close to a straight line as possible. You're not nearly as easy to, or fun to mess with as John. See how you're getting it really close to stalling, Mike? Oh, you cracked it into a stall. Nice. Don't be cracking them into a stall. Let this center give. Okay. Good. Don't let your wingtips touch. Don't let your wingtips touch. Fly the wingtips. Good. Good. So if it collapses and those wingtips are trying to touch, you got to try and fly just that open side. Got you it. don't need the, the tip lines to do it. You just need a little bit of break. As so your, your center collapses, your wingtips are going to try to touch. Fly the wingtips. Good. Now, one of the other things that I see is super important. Let's work back to our box so we don't get out of frame. One of the things that's super important when you're in a collapse situation is not to overdo and to have a little patience. The wing collapsed is okay as long as you're still flying. But if it collapses and you're trying to force it or rush the recovery, you can make the situation a lot worse. So having some patience to just fly the wing as it's currently flying and let it reopen itself will give you a much better recovery. Fly just those wingtips as they try and come together. Good, don't stall it, but try and keep those wingtips apart. Nice. Just keep that flying side open. Good. And a little pump to that closed side. Fantastic. Didn't overreact, didn't overstuff, didn't overstimulate himself in the recovery of that. So we can also see with the collapse side is it's wanting to go that way. It's also more stall happy here. So if you pull what you've been pulling, you're more inclined to stall it in this configuration. The other thing you can see with this is a wing with only 40% of the glider open can stay flying in a straight line as long as you keep it. But if you don't, it's going to follow the collapsed side. So let's say you're in the sky and you take a 50% collapse like that. The wing is going to naturally want to follow the side that collapsed. If we collapse the side, that side that's open is wanting to follow the collapse side. But like we just witnessed, if we collapse this and hold it, 
you can keep the glider flying perfectly above you with just 50% of the wing. A little bit of brake, even a little bit of weight shift, you keep that glider flying, and you could do this all day long. You could safely land like this if you really needed to, but any glider will eventually reopen itself. Its desire is to reopen itself because this side of the wing is receiving airflow and shoving it that way. It's trying to reopen. The only reason it won't reopen is if you get a cravat where you have part of the wing that sticks like this. Now, same thing with even this much of a collapse. If you do no brake, you go hands up, it's going to want to chase it but a little bit of break to the high side and you can keep that wing flying in a straight line. You don't want to overdo this high side brake input because you are at an easier rate. You will more easily stall the wing in a collapse because the wing has got a lot less air in it. Air is the pressure and how much brake you pull is going to change how much influence you're giving. So if you take, you know, big nasty collapse, I'm just going to slowly let it give. Just focus on that flying side. Don't overdo the non-flying side. Little bit of brake. Don't stall it. Let it go to the side if it needs to. All right, so if you're in the sky and it tries to dive, you may need to let it go a little bit because you need a little bit more airflow. As you see here, we've got literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 cells. I think there's 60 cells on this or close to. So I don't know what that math is, but you've got like maybe 40%, 30% of your wing flying and you can fly it just fine as long as you don't overdo that brake. So try and stall it, right? With the brake, not the tip steer. Try and stall it. Whoa. Nice recovery, no overreaction. Waits for the wing to do its work. A lot of times as well, people try and do the work for the wing, meaning they try and hit the brakes and get it open and flying. By forcing it or hitting those brakes or trying to force the wing to be flying again, you're making it worse. Let's scoot back to our, our box here. So Mike's doing a great job here at, at the collapse prevention. We can do big ears, which is a paragliding technique of losing altitude in a lift band. It basically kills the efficiency of the wing. It's not an unsafe maneuver. You could fly the wing no problem with this much of the glider. Are you gonna land comfortably? It depends on what you define comfortably as, but you could hypothetically come down like this. If it sticks, that's when you need to hit a little bit of a pump. So one thing as well is pumping and, and kiting as well as flying. You don't have your brake with your right hand there, champ. You actually got a D-line. Oh, You're welcome. So one thing with pumping is it's super frowned upon and actually a bad thing to do when kiting and when flying. You don't want to pump the brake. But in a collapse, if it sticks, you do want to pump the brake. You just want to gently slap that brake to help reopen the wing. It's the only, there's two times when, when pumping is effective. In a collapse, trying to recover the closed side, pumping is effective. In a lift band, trying to just lose altitude without moving, pumping is also effective. So let's let this side go. We can see the wing naturally wants to follow it. We shift the other way. There you go. With a little bit of weight shift, a little bit of brake, you can keep that glider flying. Let go of the collapse, the wing's naturally gonna open itself. If it doesn't, a small pump to that side, a little harder, good. And you can reopen that wing. So the next thing is collapse prevention and practicing collapse prevention. You don't really wanna practice collapse prevention in the sky because then you have to go into an environment where your wing is going to collapse, unless you, you know, simulate the collapse, which you can't do. So you could practice collapses on the ground. The, the collapsing practice on the ground and in the air is the same skill set. It is different, but the foundational skills and the understanding and the concept is the same. If you have really good understanding on the ground, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be really good in the air, but you understand it. And as you practice in the air, you will understand and get that skill set way faster because the concept is the same. Airfoil tries to overfly you in the sky. Airfoil tries to overfly you on the ground. Both are gonna to want to frontal. Let's go ahead and pull some brakes and let it come down a little bit and then throw your hands up and let's let it surge. Let it surge. Try it just to overfly you, gives out. Fly the open side, recover the side that's collapsed. Beautiful job. So see that right there, that motion of the wing shooting forward is the same in the sky. If you're flying and it shoots forward just like that, 
you have to recover or you have to prevent it the same way, which is applying brakes. And right, so you're in the sky, it shoots forward. But yeah, really stuff it. Stuff, 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 stuff. Hold it and hands up. There we go. Shoots forward, wants to collapse and overfly you. Same concept in the sky can be applied here on the ground. So what do you do, right? Let's say that glider is going to overfly you and collapse. Well, first thing is you fly the open side. You've got wingtips open. Nice, nice. You had dropped the brakes, so keeping control of this wingtip was difficult and you had to re-grab. Let's go to our brake toggles. Beautiful job. Right hand comes up and over the riser, left hand comes down and under the riser to grab control. All right, so let's say it goes to collapse. What do you do? Well, you apply brakes as it's trying to overfly to prevent it, right? So it goes to collapse, hands up. Goes to collapse, tries to give out, apply some brakes, hands up. Nice job. If you catch it, that's good. What you don't want to do when you catch it is keep those hands down because you're going to be at a, your, your chance of stalling it there is much higher. If you catch it, it's important that you quickly, not quickly as in throwing your hands up, but quickly in terms of how long you keep those hands down, get those hands up, right? So if you catch it, you need to get those hands back up so that that wing can refill with air because in this collapse attempt, it lost some of its air. If you just hit those brakes like you did there, you would have stalled it had you not gotten those hands up. So if it overflies you in the sky and you catch it, you need to get those hands up. Otherwise, you're just getting it closer and closer to stall point. But if it tries to give out, as soon as it starts to give out, you just hit those brakes and catch it. Hit those brakes and catch it. Nice. That skill in the sky and on the ground are nearly identical. If it tries to overfly, you hit those brakes to catch it. All right, so if we bring it down a little bit and throw it up and run towards it, let it overfly you. Don't run away from it, run towards it. Hands up, run towards it. There we go, tries to overfly you, totally overflew you. Fly the open side. Woo, Mike's going to work. Nice. If it collapses, don't overreact, don't overstuff the brakes, fly the open side. If you can catch it, great, but don't accidentally stall it, don't spin it. So left side gives out, you can catch it, keep the flying side flying. Bam! Nice, beautiful recovery. Let's see if I can get, whoops, just a little bit of full set. Bam! So look how close it is to stall point. Pump, just once. Good, don't accidentally stall it, but pump again. Nice, you could see it was sagging there. It was trying to get to that stall point. It wants to stall because there's not a lot of air inside. So you can't be heavy in brakes in a collapse or you are running the risk of stalling or spinning it. Beautiful recovery. So see now where it gets really screwy is where I throw you this way and collapse ah. it that way. Nice recovery. Kept the wing flying, didn't overreact, controlled the open side. All right, so now you're in the sky, the, the, you know, this side collapses, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna fly that side. Don't over pull. Less is more, even if it, in the sky, less is more, even if you let that side go that way. So even if you let it have a gentle turn, that's better than stalling that, yeah. because you could stall that really easily. Yeah. Reshift in the wrong way. There you go. Don't stall it. Look at you're naturally wanting to pull out of this brake. Yeah. In the sky, you're gonna run the risk of stalling that side as it's trying to refly, which is what happened to somebody in Iceland and they ended up spinning their wing. So see if you don't need brake, don't use any. What's this brake for? Now, in a collapse as well, you want to favor weight shift over brake. Meaning, if you're in the sky and it's trying to turn you to the right like that, you want to favor weight shifting to the right. Right? So if you're in the sky and this side collapse or this side collapses, you want to favor weight shift versus brake because you don't want to accidentally stall it. Beautiful job, Mike. Look at you go. 
flying only half away. Okay. You can fly half away just like a full fart of a wing. Doesn't change anything. Well, you just have to be more panic. gentle and not panic. I'm not using this. I see if you use this a little bit, it gets funky. It gets happy, yeah. stall happy. Yeah. Yeah, really, yeah. It's just. Oh. I let go. Just continue to fly the open side, pump the downside just gently. Nice. What you don't want to do is try and pump so fast. Give it a second. Pump a little, give it a second. Pump a little, give it a second. If it's really not working, then you may need to pump more. If it's still stuck, you, so let's say this side's stuck, right? Let's say you get stuck right here. You may actually need to turn towards it and go into a bit of a spiral and then hit it in the spiral because what do you do? You load it up more, you give it more energy, then you can hit that brake. The way I would describe that is if you're in super light wind and you pull a bit of brake, you're gonna stall it easier, right? Yep. But if you take off sprinting, you can pull that brake and not stall it, right? right? Or if you're in more wind, you can pull more brake without stalling it than you can in less wind. I'm doing more, yeah. So if you're in a spy, or if you're, you have a collapse and it sticks, well, by entering a spiral, it's like running on the ground in no wind, giving yourself more wind, or it's like kiting in more wind. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. So you have more energy to give to that glider to actually make that input. We've lost our box, let's scoot our way back. Brake toggles. Good. Okay, let's scoot to the side of the box so we don't fall. I want you to just totally overdo. I'm gonna pull this side. Right. I want you to just hammer that brake as soon as it gives. All right. Ready? Whoosh, almost spun. Let it slightly give, then just pump, hammer it. Now hammer it. Look how it spun. Whoo, do you see that spin? Yeah. You see how there was that split second where it, it just completely rotated. Yep. In the sky, that's not good. So see, let's do it one more time. Just hammer it, hammer it. Boom, she spins right there. And guess what? Now your wingtip's on the horizon. Now you're in a deep spiral. Now you need to recover a spiral. So now let's sit, let's keep this left hand all the way to the pulley, do nothing. Look at that. It wants to go that way because naturally wings want to, but as long as you fly the open side, what does it do? It keeps flying nicely. But let's hammer that left brake again. Hammer left brake, just boom, whoa, see it dives. Now you've got to hit hard right. Now you're in a big spiral. If you don't have a lot of altitude, you're not gonna have enough time to recover. So this is actually a, a drill, something you should practice and really hone in if you want to be good at collapses because you don't want to have the incorrect input. Let's do it one more time, just, just hammer absolutely right. hammer it, hammer it. Oh, whoo, look at her go. Have fun recovering that. Whereas, let's do it again, don't do anything. Way more gentle. So that translates to the sky. Let's say you are in the sky and this half collapses and you do nothing with this half, but fly this side just a little bit, it's gonna be nice and calm. But let's say this half collapses and you just hammer it. Yeah. What's gonna happen? Well, you're either going to spin or you're gonna put yourself into a spiral. Neither situation is, is a good situation. You gotta be tired now, champ. <laughs> Let's see how long we've been filming. That feels good. 20 minutes. 20 minute collapse lesson. Ready? Let, let it, nope, let it, let, I'm not gonna frontal it. I just wanna slightly collapse it. Look at that. Those wingtips wanna come together. Keep them flying, keep them flying. Don't stall it here. Don't stall it, but keep those wingtips apart. Nice job. So when you're in the sky and a situation like that happens, it's absolutely terrifying because you're just flolicking through the sky downward. Right? You're just spinning to the ground. But it's, but what you don't want to do is in this spot right here, just hit brakes, hit it. Oh well, yeah, you're way more likely to stall that wing. And now it's all over the place. And now look at what you're recovering versus what you were originally recovering. Beautiful recovery. No panic, nice and calm. It's a lot easier on the ground to not panic because you're not falling through the sky, but you have to try really hard in a collapse to not panic and overdo. And guess what? 
the habit and muscle memory you build right here is going to translate somewhat. It's not a direct translation, but it's going to partially translate. And if your natural inclination is to hit a lot of break, your natural inclination up there is going to be to hit a lot of break. So now look how close it is to stall, right? Look at it. It's hanging back. Hit brakes even a little bit. And you're going to be way more likely to stall that wing right here. Oh, she's fighting to spin. And now we just throw those hands up and I let go and rock backwards. Nice job. Nice recovery. Nice recovery. Don't want to overdo. You don't want to stall or spin a wing. If you stall or spin your wing and you do not have SIV experience, it is not a bad idea to just immediately throw your reserve. If you do have SIV experience and you have altitude, you can attempt a recovery. But if you don't have either of those two things, it's best to not even try. Like the guy in Iceland who had a collapse who spun it, as soon as he spun it, he should have thrown unless he had extensive SIV experience, which it appeared he didn't because he didn't respond correctly to the situation. Good. So now let's do this and a little bit of this. Really throw you for a funk. Nice job. Just keep that wing flying, keep it above you. Skill set that you're building right here does translate. You're doing great. I'm gonna stop bothering you. Yeah. Nice job. Good. That is a lot of fun. Yeah. It's good practice. It is. All right, guys. So I wanted to hop on here and make this video. I wanted to show you this because this is something that you can practice on the ground and it does translate and it can and will save you in the sky. There is a video of a guy, Tucker recently reviewed it in Iceland who spun his wing as soon as it collapsed. The spin is way harder to recover than the collapses. Ultimately, it was the spin that had him crash, not the collapse. He spun the wing, continued to spin, tried to recover, didn't know how to recover a spin and had to throw a reserve or didn't throw a reserve and ended up hitting the ground. Reserve is a better option if you do end up spinning and you don't have a lot of SIV experience. But I wanted to show this. I wanted to show some of the common things that people do wrong, which is often overdoing or neglecting the flying side and focusing on the collapse side. And I think watching this and seeing that and seeing exactly what it looks like and how you can recover it and how you can practice it is something everybody should do some practice of. Anyways, guys, Mike did a great job. You guys should practice that. If you want to learn how to fly, check us out at backcountryppg.com and we'll see you guys in the next video.